this is actually going to be about dollar value LIFO. But before, I want to talk a little bit about perpetual LIFO. Okay, so when you do LIFO, it's last in, first out. And if you buy more inventory than you sell, you end up with these LIFO layers. Okay, so this is basically for one year, I guess. But they started off with 4000 at the beginning. All right, then they sold two, so they had two left. Then they bought a thousand, so now they have the two and then a thousand that they just bought. Then they bought another three, so now they have three layers two thousand, one thousand, and three thousand. And this two thousand right here, remember, is still left over from the four thousand they had at the beginning of the year. All right, and so it continues on through the year. And by the time we get to November, we have three layers. This 2000 is still the 2000 from the beginning of the year. Now remember, it doesn't have to be an actuality. This is really just all on paper, but that's what they're going by. All right, and then this $6, this 1000 at $6, that's actually still left over from January. And the 1500 at seven is left over from a March purchase. Okay, so these are older. And then these prices that are attached to it are older, cheaper prices, all right? Because their prices are rising. If you notice in January, their beginning inventory had a unit price of 550 a unit. By the end, it had a unit price of 750 a unit, all right? So when you use LIFO, your ending inventory that shows up on your balance sheet is older, cheaper cost, okay? If inflation is not a big deal, then it's then it's usually not a big usually not a big deal. But at the same time, you could sometimes have a company that's been in business for many, many, many years, and they could have layers in here that are super old and their prices are really cheap. So it kind of makes things look funny. But anyway. Um, okay, so that's just a little bit about life of layers okay if you buy more inventory than you sell then you end up with these life of layers and they could be at older cheaper costs than what you're currently paying okay so i'm going to pause then i'm going to go to the dollar value stuff okay so with dollar value lifo instead of looking at just the change in units or just you know whatever your units are multiplied by the cost and that's your ending inventory they want to know if that chain, they want to look more at the dollar value of the ending inventory, not just the number of units in the ending inventory. And then they want to determine if that change in dollar value is because prices have actually changed or if it's because, um, well, or if the number of units has gone up by that much, or if it's more because inflation has created such an increase in price that the inventory looks a lot higher. All right, so we're actually really looking at the dollar amount or the dollar value of the inventory. Okay, so the first thing they do is they calculate a cost index, all right, based on the layer year. All right, so the cost index is the cost in the layer year, so that's like the current year, and then divided by the cost in the base year. The base year is when you started using LIFO. And these are all dollar amounts right here, okay? All right, so then let's go back down. Actually, let's go down here to the estimation one. All right, so Haynes adopted dollar value LIFO on January 1st of 2021 when the inventory cost was $400,000. By December 31st, the inventory was $462,000. So they want to know if that really means that their inventory increased or it's just that there was inflation and that's what caused the increase or how much of this increase was caused by inflation. Usually it's kind of split between the two. Okay, so they gave us the cost index. So I said uh, 1.05 is their cost index.
And in this case, they're just giving that to us. Okay. Um, sorry, I had to get off for a second. So they're telling us that the index is 105. And that's what we're going to use. All right. So the first thing you have to do is take the current year inventory and then divide it by 1.05. So in base year dollars, that means that your inventory is really valued at $440,000. Okay. Then. So that means that the layer added is really $40,000. All right, so 40,000 is actually representative of an increase in quantity, and the other 22,000 is actually due to an increase in cost, okay? So this is the big thing that you need to pay attention to because that's what they're calling the layer, okay? They're adding, that's the layer that's gonna be added, okay? I'm sorry, I'm saying okay a lot. So then when you try to figure out your ending inventory valuation, you're going to start with the base year of 400,000. You're going to add the new layer of 40, multiply it by the index, and then add those up. And that's your ending inventory based on dollar value LIFO. All right. So should you not have an increase? If the quantity decreases, all right, then there's no layer. And you would actually subtract out. So in this, the one they're showing you here is that if the ending inventory at the end of 2021 is 380, then you would actually um, reduce the existing layer by 20,000. The existing layer being the 400,000. All right, that would actually reduce to 20,000. Okay, so I'm going to go do another video, I think, and work out... Actually, we can work out this one. So one thing I want to point out before I do that little problem is that they did note up here that sometimes for the index, they use a consumer price index number or a producer price index number. Sometimes they determine it internally. All right. So when we go down here, they're giving us the index. So I'm assuming they're doing using the consumer price index or something like that. Okay, so they give us, on January 1st, Johnson adopted dollar value LIFO. Inventory value on this date was $500,000. Inventory data for 21 through 24 as follows, and these are all year ends. And then they gave us the cost index. So we have to calculate everything. So the first thing you're gonna do is actually divide this. All right, so they're gonna do well, for January 1st of 2021, that's when they switch to LIFO. You're going to have two that year, All right? And that's always going to be divided by one. Honestly, I don't know why you just can't carry $500,000 over because that's really all you're doing. Okay. So then at the end of the year, they're going to take the ending inventory of 556500 They're going to divide it by the cost index and deflate it to the 530 All right. Then the change here is 30,000. That's where this 30 came from. All right, so it's, they start off with 500 up by 30, so there's 30, okay? And then you inflate it back. So the 30,000 times the, the price index or cost index. And then these two add together and there's your new inventory. All right, so the end of the second year, your ending inventory is 596. The cost index was 110. So you divide that. So you have 542. All right. Now you already had 530, $500 here, 30 here. So you're just adding another 12. This has to add up to the 542. All right. And then you multiply that 12 by the cost index and reinflate it. And then these three add up, and there's that. End of 2023, 615 is your ending inventory. Divide it by the cost indice. You're deflating it. So you get 535. Notice that it's less, okay? It decreased. So you had 500. That stays, you know, these are all carrying down, okay? So we had 500. We still have 30. But this last in, last in, first out, you're going to reduce this last layer and assume it went down. So 
you're going to change it to just 5,000. Okay, you see that? They went from 12 to 5. So now I've got 500 plus 30 is 5 plus 5 is 535. And then multiply everything out, add them up. All right, so the next year we have um, 720,000 divided by the cost index for that year. So we have 576. The layers you had previously stay the same. Notice that nothing got added for 2023 because we actually took it out of the 2022 layer. So 2023, if you just want to put a zero there, that would be fine. You know, it's kind of up to you. Um, but we had 535,000 already, so we need to add another 41,000 times the 125. Add all these up, and that's how you get that ending number. And this is the number, this shows up on the balance sheet, and it's used for your financial statement purposes.